Hello, folks and goats. Thanks for tuning in. This is super exciting. This is our first visual along with one of our videos for our Theros Beyond Death set review. So super thanks exciting. so much for joining in. Uh, let's go ahead and just introduce ourselves so you can put some faces to some names. Uh, so I'm Landon. Oh, I thought you were going to introduce Caleb. Oh, I thought about it, but okay. Well, I'm Caleb, and I thought I was supposed to introduce you. Well, so. yeah, all right. Well, I'm Griffin, so everything wow, works everyone's, out. Everyone's <laughs> <We're> here. <laughs> so, um, let's go ahead and just jump into it. Uh, it's super exciting. Theros Beyond Death is going to be coming out. Uh, pre-release is the 19th and 20th, so make sure you go to your pre-release event. Uh, we're just going to be talking about all the cards um, that we feel are pertinent to Commander as far as the, the mythic, uh, mythic rares and rares and then some uh, uncommons and commons. So if we do skip over a card... Uh, that's probably because we feel it's not pertinent to Commander enough to talk about it. Um, but definitely uh, leave a link or a comment in the, the, the video if you think that there is some pertinence to the cards that we've skipped over. Before we get started, just make sure that you like and subscribe and share our videos. Um, we're going to have a lot of gameplay videos coming up. So we want to make sure that you guys are getting notified about those as well. So maybe also hit that bell and... Look forward to some sweet videos. And if you want to see a, decks. if you want to see a certain legendary creature in here have a commander deck, let us know, and we'd love to make a deck tech based around some of these commanders. In fact, we've already made some deck techs based off of commanders mm -hmm. in Theros. So very exciting monocolor set. Not hesitate set. to let us know. All right. Um, so the first card we have, if there's nothing, is there any other? That's it. That's it. Let's get into stuff. it. Cool. All right. Some so bit. the first card we have is Ashiok Nightmare Muse. Mm. She is three blue Bay. and a black. Oh. They. Ashiak Nightmare Mirrors, three blue and black for a five loyalty legendary planeswalker Ashiok. Three abilities plus one create a two three blue and black nightmare creature token with whenever this creature attacks or blocks, each opponent exiles the top two cards of their library. Not bad. A minus three return target non land permanent to its owner's hand, then that player exiles a card from their hand. And then minus seven, you may cast up to three face up cards that your opponents own from exile without paying their mana cost. So a really cool uh, Demir Planeswalker. My first thoughts when I saw Ashok is this would go really nice in like a Grixis control Nicol Bolas deck because a lot of the Nicol Boluses tend to exile cards from people's hands or even their library. So uh, Ashiok being able to interact with that makes it a pretty, pretty good and viable card to go into the 99. Um, as far as the card itself, it's kind of tough to see it being that good just because it targets <clears throat> one player with its minus three and creating a two three that exiles one person's uh, top two cards. Like it's it's good, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's it's a powerhouse planeswalker. It's nice that it makes a blocker though. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's not just vulnerable when it enters the battlefield. And it does have pseudo removal in its minus three. Mm -hmm. um, but at least like the abilities feed into one another. Like, so the plus one and the minus one feed into the minus seven, Definitely. which is really nice. Um, it's a well-designed card. I don't know if it's super relevant in Commander. It might be stronger in Standard. Oh, definitely. Uh, definitely going to be fun in Limited. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. For sure. But, um, I don't think I'm putting it in any of my Commander decks. Yeah. I Yeah, I don't think so either. Yeah. I, think, I think there are better cards for that mana in, like, a Control Center deck. Especially and with the Mirror. It's not super great in Mill either, because in a, in a Mill deck, you're wanting to exploit the cards that are put into graveyards, but Ashok exiles them. Yeah. So it's it's not super great in a mill deck. It kind of is anti synergy in that regard. So maybe in a control deck, but like I said, there are better cards for five mana in a control deck. So mm -hmm. for sure. Cool. All right. Uh, Lana, do you want to read the next one? Yeah. So we've got Athreos Shroud Veil. It's four, a white and a black. For a legendary enchantment creature, God it has indestructible. And as long as your devotion to white and black is less than seven, Athreos isn't a creature. So that's a typical God power and at the beginning of your end step you can put a coin counter on another target creature and whenever a creature with a coin con counter on it dies or is put in exile return that creature return that card to the battlefield under your control so <clears throat> that is pretty cool effect um a little bit slow because you can only put one coin counter on a creature per turn mm -hmm. but it's some nice protection to bring something back if it's died or exiled um i think in a reanimator strategy there are probably better commanders but this effect is pretty cool. I don't think we've seen anything quite like it before. I don't think I there are very many cards that I know of that can recur a creature that's been exiled mm -hmm. like this. So that's, and other people's creatures too. Yes, yeah. So it's important to note that you can put coin counters on your opponent's creatures as well. That's so awesome. So there's like a type of like theft. Yeah, theft also <clears throat> reanimator. So just 
uh, go check out the deck tech that we did mm -hmm. on this one. We won't go into too much depth, but um, this is a really cool card, and we built a deck that's kind of like a reanimator strategy. Um, some cool cards that pair with Atheros are Strionic Resonator, uh, Corpse Dance, Whip of Erebos, these repeatable effects that you can bring so creatures way, back. So also like ways of, of putting more counters in one mm -hmm. per turn, like with the Strionic Resonator. Yeah, with Strionic yeah, Resonator. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, so we've got Calyx, Destiny's Hand. He's a four-loyalty Planeswalker for... Two colorless, one green, and one white. He's got a plus one ability that says, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal an enchantment card from among them and put that card into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. <laughs> and then a minus three, exile target creature or enchantment you don't control until target enchantment you control leaves the battlefield. And then minus seven, return all enchantment cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. So this seems pretty good. It's got a lot of utility in a Bant Enchantment deck, for example. Um, we could see this being good in Estrid, and yeah, even in a white green enchantment enchantress deck. Oh like yeah, I'm probably I'm putting it in Siona. Yeah, so we'll it just gives you some card draw to get your enchantments. It's got like an Oblivion Ring uh, esque effect, which is honestly really good. And then uh, it has an open the vault effect, which is absurd. Yeah, yeah in absolutely. Decks. I mean, it, it takes you four turns to get there. Mm -hmm. um, or three turns and an extra turn to activate it. But um, the fact that you can look at the top four, it's not just draw a card, you get to select an enchantment. That top four is awesome. Yeah, that means if you're in an enchantment strategy, this is definitely a very, uh, very good utility card to add to, to your 99. He's cool. I'd definitely put him in the 99. Yeah, for sure. I think any of the, the band commanders that came out with the Estrid... Tuvasa, um, is Tuvasa and Kestia. And Kestia. And Cultivator. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, the next one we have is Elspeth, Sun's Nemesis for two white, white. We have a five loyalty legendary planeswalker Elspeth with no pluses, but there's a catch. Her minus one, up to two target creatures you control each get plus two plus one until end of turn. For a minus two, create two one one white human soldier creature tokens. For minus three, you gain five life. And she has escape. Now this is a new mechanic from Theris Beyond Death. I'll go through it real quick. Escape for four white, white meaning exile four other cards from your graveyard, and then you may cast this card from your graveyard for its escape cost. And that's repeatable. If you have more than four cards, you can do it multiple times. Now, when I first saw this uh, this card, um, I, I like the idea of this in the standard because escape seems very underrated and powerful to be able to recur this over and over. However, uh, in, a, in a commander deck, the only way I could see this being um, in, in any way relevant is maybe in a token a token maker deck or maybe even an aristocrats deck because the minus two is really the thing that you'll be focusing on is making those two humans um i don't see the plus two plus one being of any use to any of your decks or or gaining five life uh, being that useful yeah i don't think uh making two two tokens is super super powerful and like they they only gave her minuses to make up for the fact that you could cast her from your graveyard and i don't think that that's where you want to be in a lot of commander decks um or the aggroishness of the card yeah either. yeah so like it, it definitely pulls you in the aggro strategy but who knows maybe like it's secretly good and like uh as a good finisher in an aggro deck but yeah i mean you i could, don't see i don't see it secret. right i could see this being in, in any type of like tristani or risk deck if you have an anointed procession or a divine visitation you can get some so it requires some build from, around like, yeah it's it not does. just yeah you already ha you have to be playing other cards mm -hmm. in your deck to make this card better and i think you kind of want to limit those types of cards yeah i simply see sure. this as a either a aristocrats you know like regna and crav type deck or a populate type deck mm -hmm. like tristani or or risk Another god. <laughs> Erebos, bleak oh, god. hearted. <laughs> Three and a black. Enchantment, god, indestructible, classic devotion to five. Yeah, it's five. And he's not a creature otherwise. And then whenever another creature you control dies, you may pay two life. And if you do so, you get to draw a card. He then has an activated ability that costs one and a black and sacrificing another creature. And if you do so, target creature gets minus two, minus one until end of turn. As a rule, I really like abilities, like triggered abilities that say whenever something happens, you can get value. Yeah. Uh, at first, I wasn't super like stoked on this card, but like I said, I really like <clears throat> cards that have uh, triggered abilities that happen whenever something happens, especially something as common as a creature you control dying. You can you can manipulate that really well. And two life to draw a card, 
isn't really that steep of a cost, I don't feel like. Especially like when you look at cards like Necropotence or Villas, Broker of Blood, or like Razaketh, where you can pay like two mana to tutor a card. Like, for sure. This is something that Black is really good at, trading life for a card advantage. And I think Erebos does a pretty good job. <clears throat> um, I like that he has removal stapled on him as well. I think that removal and card advantage stapled on one card shouldn't be overlooked. So that those are my initial thoughts about yeah, it. Yeah, I think this card, when I first saw it, I, I don't know that I loved it just because it, it you could think of it as a sack outlet, but it's a steep cost for it. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, having some uh, Grim Horror Specs or Midnight Reaper effect in your command zone, if you're playing this as your commander, that's pretty powerful. That means anytime something would die that you're going to get value off of that. So possibly Erebos as a commander, while not being the best um, aristocrats or, or death or graveyard type creature, can get you a lot of uh, value throughout the game. So that's, that's potential. They're definitely much better yeah. commanders aristocrats. for an aristocrats style deck, for sure. But outside of aristocrats, I mean, it wouldn't feel too bad if you had just built up a board of creatures with Erebos. And like if a board wipe happens, you're not super mad about it because no. like it just does whenever they die, right? So mm-hmm. like... If they die to a board wipe, you're not super you mad. You can still... still get value off of that. Um, and also just as another creature, not non-token creature. Mm-hmm. So that like works really well with tokens. A lot of these type effects are limited to creatures, not creature tokens. Mm-hmm. So it's that's a nice that's a nice mechanic on there as well. I so. also like that if you really have to dig, or if there's not something for you to target on the other side of the board. You could actually target one of your own creatures with the mm-hmm. minus two, minus one. We also have to and sacrifice a creature too. Right, you'd be so. sacking the creature mm-hmm. and then trying to kill, kill another, another creature, creature to be able to draw two, to draw cards. two cards. Yeah, mm-hmm. I kind of like that. I could, I could see myself doing that in like my yeah. Marin deck, for example. Definitely. So, so I, you get two experience counters. Uh-huh. As well. I get the experience yeah. counters. Get the draw. It's super good. Also, minus two, minus one is good at killing indestructible things too, because mm-hmm. uh, they'll die to state based actions, not an effect that says destroy it. That's just. It's true, Super nitpicky, definitely. But, yeah. <laughs> so I think <laughs> as, case there. as as a commander, I think this is probably a little bit subpar compared to other ones. You know, like Yagmoth, Thran Physician, or or Corvold. even or oh. Corvold as way sacrificing. Busted. But I don't think you'd be mad putting this in either one of those decks because it's just going to give you some utility because it is indestructible and he will stay on the battlefield. And he's going to stay on the battlefield. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. great in the ninety nine for sure. All right, we've got Hilliod Suncrowned. He is another god, the mono white god. He's two and one white to cast. He's a five five, indestructible, devotion five to white. And his abilities are whenever you gain life, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature or enchantment you control. Okay, so we're gonna give Mirari's Wake. Uh... Or himself. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just a. That, the, oh, that's true. Yeah, you can give him him, and then once he okay. becomes uh, that, that's a creature, a good point. then he's. He's buff, he's swole. Nice. Starts throwing the spear. And then his second ability is one and a white, and it says another target creature gains lifelink until end of turn. So what do you guys think you're going to be putting plus one plus one counters on? Uh, Oh, let's see. Mm -hmm. Soldier tokens that Elspeth makes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And she gains life. She gains life. Oh my gosh. This feels like this could go. That's a combo. No, no, no. no. So, infinite, right. infinite combos in mono white. <laughs> it doesn't exist. We can stop beating around. Johnny's but... pride mate. <laughs> Johnny's pride hey, mate. Hey, really there good. you go. That, yeah. honestly, he's got his own token now. Yeah, he does have cool. his own token. You guys are, are we missing something? <laughs> We're being mean on we mono white. We might be missing out on Triskillian and possibly another really good creature. Triskillian, uh, walking ballista. Yeah. So obviously, there's the discussion online about the the walking ballista and the Triskillian combo with Heliod, which is really good, especially with mono white. You can do a lot of tutoring, and you can uh, you just have, have to tutor of, once, really. Yeah, you have a lot of ways of getting there. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, if you have walking ballista in your hand, that's a a you know turn four win. Um, Seems really fun for the first, first time, time that exactly. you win, you that you but play that deck. really, really boring after the first time. So, so let's let's say that the the we're gonna separate this from Walking Blister and Triskelion, and that kind of combo with Heliod is gonna be the competitive, like you're trying to win as fast as possible. On the other hand, you can do other stuff. With you that? can oh. honestly, uh, there is a deck tech that's gonna be coming about uh, about Heliod. I'm gonna be doing that, so I won't go into too much details about it. But there is some cool. <laughs> Um, interactions that you can do with Heliod with um, a, a go wide, make a lot of tokens and has like a soul sisters type strategy. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you gain a life and you can just like pump up your team and consistently pump them up and add other things like Divine Visitation or Catherine's Crusade um, and just have 
Heliod be the the assistant to your strategy rather than the uh, complete other half of the combo. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I think uh, life gain is a archetype, if you will, that's very well supported in white. You have access to a lot of powerful spells. Uh, it'll be a strong, a very good strategy. Um, at like your average table, gaining a whole bunch of life and making a pillow for it's pretty strong. It's a pretty safe bet to make a, a good deck. So. Mm. Kiora bests the Sea God. Sagas are back. Sagas are back. So excited. Uh, so sagas. for, yeah, they're pretty cool. For five blue and a blue, we have a three. You know, I've never actually introduced one of these. So Kiora bests the Sea God, five blue and a blue for an enchantment saga for the first lore uh, create an 8-8 eight, eight blue cracking creature token with hexproof. Uh, the second lore counter, tap all non-land permanents target opponent controls. If you don't untap during the controller's next untap step, ouch. And third lore counter, gain control of target permanent and opponent <coughs> controls, untap it. So this is a really <coughs> powerful effect on a, a saga. I think the downside to this is number one, that it, it does take three turns to complete all of these. But at best, you get like an 8 8 Kraken, and then it also costs 7 mana for yeah, the enchantment. Yeah, it costs 7. Yeah. That's, that's, that's pretty tough. The, the nice thing about it, though, even though your opponents can see it coming, they don't know which opponent's going to get hit by the last <laughs> two abilities. That's, true. that's the nice thing. You can kind of like make some deals and be like, some hey, politic this. Yeah. I've got a massive sleep spell that's going to overwhelm your entire board. You, oh, can kinda, you, you can kind of hedge that to your advantage. But I think that's 7 awesome. mana is probably a little bit too steep of a cost. I mean, sure. like, each of these abilities um, kind of exist on individual spells. Like, the second ability is Sleep, and it's a four-mana spell. Mm -hmm. uh, the third ability is, like, Treachery or, like, Control Magic. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Sleep costs four mana. Control Magic usually costs four to five mana. But, I don't know, I think seven mana is a little bit too much, and to do it every turn, I don't know. Yeah, at right. what point do you think that this is worth the seven mana? Is it with the 8-8 eight eight he with Hexproof? Is it after the second lore counter? Where do you think it's I think it? the second ability is really good. Yeah. It is, because they don't untap uh, during the next untap Yeah, set. that, like, and a lot of times you do that to the strongest player at the table, and then the other three players can have their chances at hitting the strongest player. That can level the playing field. For sure. But... I don't know if by the time you get to seven mana, if it'll be too little too late. Um, and I also don't know what deck you would specifically want this in. But so the idea that I had with this, and this is potentially something that could happen in the future. We did get a Naya uh, token uh, populate strategy. I think if we ever come out with a um, Bant uh, populate strategy, this may be the well, card to go in there. You get a, there are a lot of spells in blue and green that that create, that create things. Yeah, yes, that quasi quasi duplicate. Mm -hmm. uh, ugh, fracture. There's like a a, re, a blue 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 one. Mm -hmm. There's uh, a lot of there's ways, like to, a make lot of ways tokens, to make tokens. Um, but there's no like good commander to helmet. I mean, there are some pretty good ones. There's the uh, the bant dragon from the uh, original dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah the dragon. Forget the name. But the elder dragons. But um, as far as it goes right now, there's not one deck I can think of that would really want this unless you you want to use that tap all non land per or tap all creatures and and get uh, get through. Oh, it's all non land permits. Okay, yeah, That's a little bit more. From from what I've seen with sagas, uh, I don't see too many of them hitting the table mm -hmm. in no. like EDH. I mean like. Um, the Eldest Reborn, I see from time to time. Uh, Phyrexian Scripture is Eldest Reborn. Sometimes. Um, I'd rather just play a four mana board wipe in that. That's in true. That case. Yeah, that's true. But for the, yeah, for the most part, Sagas seem to be a little bit too slow. Because you think about this was designed for standard. You only have to wait one turn before the next lore counter is put on. But in EDH, yeah, you have to wait turns. three turns yep. mm -hmm. before it gets another lore counter. So I don't know. It might be a little bit too slow. For sure. Clothis, God of Destiny. It's a new a new god. Um, one a red and a green for an indestructible god who is not a creature unless your devotion is at seven. It's a lot. And then at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, exile target card from a graveyard. If it was a land card, you add a red or a green to your mana pool. Otherwise, you gain two life and Clothis deals two damage to each opponent. So basically, you get to exile a card from a graveyard every turn. And if it was land, you get mana. If it wasn't, you do damage. And I think a majority of the time, it's just going to sit on the table and just do two damage to everybody. 
isn't terrible if you're playing it in a deck that wants to just incrementally do a lot of damage. But I guess you could play those uh, pain decks. Yeah, mm -hmm. you could play those cards that double damage. Oh, like Dictate. Wrath, yeah, yeah Dictate of the Twin Gods. Furnace of, Furnace Wrath. of Wrath. Furnace of Wrath. Okay. But then, I oh, mean, you're doing fun. four. Yeah. And <laughs> honestly, this is this is a really interesting um, strategy in red-green yeah. that we've got. This is normally a Rakdos-type effect. Um, the first ability is very red-green, but the second ability... What, right, um, to exile things yeah, and deal exile damage. things. And even in the 99, you have many... I mean, look at Xenagos. We went a straight downgrade from Xenagos. I mean, Xenagos <laughs> is one of those popular nuts. world commanders. Definitely. So this kind of... It feels a little bit bad to get something like this after we've had Xenagos, because a lot of girl players really want something that's good at smacking smacking down some people. Yeah. But this is... I don't think this is... It wasn't what you're meant for Commander. For. It was no. probably made for other formats. Okay, so next we've got... Kroxa, Titan of Death's Hunger. He's got some sweet art on him, that's for sure. He is one black and one red for a 6-6. Six, six. For two mana. Seems kind of crazy for two <laughs> mana, but uh, let's let's get into him. Let's read him off. He says, when Kroxa enters the battlefield, sacrifice it, unless it escaped. Escaped so, from what? Unless it escaped from the graveyard. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. So the second it hits the field, you have to sacrifice it. But it does have an ETB trigger. It says whenever he enters the battlefield or attacks, actually, each opponent discards a card. Then each opponent who didn't discard a non-land card this way loses three life. And then he escapes for two black, two red, and then you have to exile five other cards from your graveyard to bring him back and put him on the field. So to be honest, guys, I don't... I don't know what to think about this card. All right, so let me start off but with he the positives. Guys, I think Kroxa is uh, is hip. He's the absolute <laughs> unit, honestly. So um, being able to cast your commander for two and already have an effect that comes off right off the bat, that's awesome. And the fact that you can bring him back and escaping, it's not hard to have so many cards in your graveyard, especially in Rakdos. So being able to escape but consistently, that's pretty cool. Now. The thing that you have to remember about Crooks, and especially anything that escapes, is that you have a period to respond before you sacrifice it. So there's some effects that you can do. There's there's bounce spells that you can do to return it back to your hand. I mean, you can um, sundial the infinite and keep him on the field? Yep, yeah, you can sundial Whoa. the infinite. Um, um, there's this cool interaction with Mirage Mirror, where you can copy it when it comes out, and then you can keep it around. Um, even just escaping it and swinging in for six, as well as making each opponent discard a card um, every time it attacks. Guys, this is a really powerful effect. Now, the the downside to it is that um, the discard strategy is, number one, not super supported. liked um, or supported yeah. in, in this way. I mean, there's there's... Commander decks that abuse discard like Anya, Falcon Wrath from Commander 2019. Or like Nekuzar. Uh, Nekuzar. Does draw and discard. Mm -hmm, draws and discards. Um, but Kroxa does give you a lot of value for a uh, very minimal cost. And the fact that you don't have to pay Commander tax and just bring it back uh, every every time it dies and keep attacking with it. Obviously, people are going to remove Kroxa because every time that you swing with him or he enters the battlefield to discard a card adding other discard effects into your deck as well, it's going to be very easy to remove everybody's hands pretty early in the game. So you have the specters in here. Uh, if you're building commander deck that make you know, discard, um, you can do, you know, reanimation strategies if you're wanting them to discard things into their uh, graveyard and then bring it back under your control. I mean, there's there's a little bit of aven or some avenues that you can go with this deck, but I do think it's a very strong and top tier discard strategy in my opinion. That's pretty gross how quickly you can just shut down the rest of the table. Mm -hmm. Especially with this. Like, I, I think j blinking this is going to exile that clause that says sacrifice it um, and then have it have the, enter the battlefield again. You'll still have to sacrifice it when it comes back in, but you can do that twice. I mean, there's, there's a lot of different ways that you can abuse this ability um, in between that time where he enters and when he gets sacrificed. All right, I'll build a, I'll build a Crooks the deck and have these guys suffer at the, its hand. <laughs> That's what he always does to us. <laughs> this thing is at Ghost 4 Sir Next, we have Nylea Keen-Eyed, another one of the gods. She is green. Uh, three and a green for she, a five, six. She's green. She definitely keen. has reach, right? She doesn't uh, have she, reach. Her, nope, she doesn't. Now, this is going to be ironic. We'll talk about her this. Her bow doesn't have a scope on it. So <laughs> she can't hit things in the air. <laughs> There's a lot of talk about this, but it gets better. Wait till we get to uh, 
her intervention card, and then we can go on a rant about that because right. it does affect things with flying. Okay, anyway, I'll let you read. The card. <laughs> it Nightly doesn't have reach. <laughs> it does not have reach. Just big bold. Her eyes are not that keen. Does not. If she can. All right. Anyway, should, uh, read the card. I should probably read the card. Nylea Keen-Eyed is three and a green, a legendary enchantment creature god, five, six with indestructible. Uh, if your devotion to green is less than five, uh, Nylea isn't a creature. Creature spell as you cast, costs one generic less to cast, and for two and a green, and not tap, don't have to tap it, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put it into your hand. Otherwise, you may put it into your graveyard. So, I mean, you have classic uh, cost reduction to all of your green creature spells. Or actually, just all of your creature spells, so that's pretty cool. Um, I, I originally thought this would be pretty good in a focused green deck if you want to make this the commander, such as, like, I don't know, like an elf deck. You could use this mm -hmm. to discount all of your elves. That would be fun. Um, this goes really well in Selvala, Heart of the Wilds, because this would give you a way of using your infinite mana that you can make. Um, She's a pretty good mana sink. I really like that second ability. She is, absolutely, because, I mean, you can't... You may put it into your graveyard if it's not a creature. So if it's a creature, you have to keep it on the top. Um, but if it's not, you can just cycle through all of your deck. No, if it's a creature card, you put it into your hand. And if it's not a creature, you... Right, so you don't get to put it into your graveyard. Yeah. So a real top card of your library, if it's a creature card, you put it into your hand. Otherwise, Otherwise you may you put, put it... Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you can take all the lands, dump them out. Um, you, this would be pretty good, I think, in the Lord Windgrace deck. You could just keep dumping lands into your graveyard or to get Moldrotha some use. Deck. Moldrotha deck. would be awesome. Um, as far as like a commander, I think there's better mono-colored green commanders to be able to assist most spells. strategies. Yeah. Um, uh, but you know, if you wanted to play an elf deck and put this at the helm, I think you'd find that this would help you in in a lot of ways that you wouldn't expect. The nice thing is it's a mana rock that's going to be on the table probably the whole game. Like I said, it's and these indestructible gods, they tend to stick around. Yeah, so it's, it's nice to like... Medallion. Yeah, it's like an emerald medallion that's indestructible with... Yeah, like I said, I don't think she's a, a very strong standalone commander. I could be wrong, but I think that she performs better in a multicolored deck. So far, sure. there's not a plan to make a Nylea commander deck, but if you guys want to see it, please comment and let us know if you want to see something. I'm sure we'd be happy to make something as best as we could uh, for you guys. I'd be down for making that. Cool. You volunteer. All right. What do you have here? Moving on. <gasps> Nyx Bloom Ancient. It's a green creature. Noted by the four green, green, green in its mana cost. It's definitely yeah. green. Definitely green. It's got three of them. Uh, trample. It's pretty good, right? I, trample for seven mana? It's not bad. It's not bad All right, all. moving on Okay. the next card. Let's see. If you oh. tap a permanent for mana, like where this is going, it produces three times... As much of that mana Wait, instead. No, they've never made a card like that. There's well, no three way. Times, three times. Three times. Is this, whatever. Is that's this that's a, a lie. Thing? This is this is this is a proxy, right? Soul ring taps for six. Yeah, so it Hala does. taps for a nut amount. Yep. Guy's cradle taps for a lot. Your lands tap for a lot. Um, a lot being quantified as three times. The amount. <laughs> Um, that is the quantifiable term. So yes. we all have different opinions about this. So we'll start with Landon. Uh, I don't think it belongs in every single green deck. Um, no. f like, uh, I think that for seven mana, I'd rather have lots of card draw, or like, I'd rather play something that's going to like, like let me win the game right then for seven mana. I think that this is kind of a, a win more card, and I'd rather keep my mana accelerants to low cost, that way I can cast them early on in the game. Sure. I'd rather ramp into like, game winning stuff i kind of just repeating myself but this ramping into this doesn't really win me the game i need to have other cards for this to ramp into yeah mm -hmm. that makes so. sense honestly i don't think i'm ever going to pay seven mana for this but i'm still going to put it in decks where i can i yeah. cheat it out that gets that my gets good. Marin. i would i would actually really love this in in a deck but like would me. you rather would you rather cheat this out with Marin or reanimate like Razaketh <sighs> or villas or a big powerful demon. They're so good. Or hey, or this like is a Montreux. five five with trample. They've got trample on this card. You know what? You're right. This is what <laughs> swinging for five every turn. That's totally what this wants. To Some math nerds tell me how that. many turns. <laughs> <laughs> how many turns is that, math nerds? Uh, eight. <laughs> They're like what? Eight. I think Nick's Blue Ancient, while definitely being extremely powerful, 
Um, paying retail for this on turn seven is probably not the way that you want to go. <laughs> um, cheating it out, yeah. ramping into it with an elf deck, this is absolutely absurd. This can make sure that you either, the way that you want to use this card is either project you into the winning state or just win the game outright. Because this yeah. will be the target, just like Vorniclex and uh, Mirari's, Mirari's Wake, Wake Cage Sun. Like these things that already mm -hmm. double your mana, this thing is going to do it better. You it have would... to win the game after playing this. Well, and nice. you see, it, it actually, it, I think it shines in decks where your commander has a mana sink. It's like a Zuri. Oh, yeah. Because um, oh, yeah. you always have access to a Zuri. Mm -hmm. So, but if you don't have a mana sink in the command zone, you have to spend cards in your deck that you could sink mana that into. makes sense. And then you have to spend card slots for tutors. Right. Or like lots of card draw. Yeah. But if you have it in the command zone, um, that gets exponentially better because that that limits how many cards you have to put in your deck to find a right. mana sink. So as far as, mm -hmm. like, the way that I like to think about this is that Nyx Bloom Ancient propels you in a state that you could probably already do with other cards just more efficiently. So, for instance, with Landon's and Zuri deck, uh, that you'll see a deck tech on pretty soon, his elves already create an enormous amount of mana, and probably more than Landon could ever even use. use yeah. Um, so having a Nyx Bloom Ancient in there, well just like Lion said, would be a win more card, would actually be pretty redundant. And even with Selvala as well, Heart of the Wilds, you already are creating so much mana that having this on the battlefield would just let you do it even more, mm -hmm. which may not actually yeah. happen. Well, Selvala goes... isn't... Yeah. Selvala isn't looking for more mana. It's looking no. for card draw and a win con. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's looking for, like, a way to close out the game. I think it all just goes back to what you were saying where you've got to have something to sink all this mana into or else it's just useless. I, yeah. I run a mono green elf deck too and that's what I'm constantly running into is I've got way too much mana and nothing to do and with it. And not a lot of cards in my hand. Yeah. That's always the wall that I'm up against because mm -hmm. yeah. I build out this huge board and like I'm, I'm always in that state of just really hoping that it comes back to my turn and I have this whole board. Yeah. And it's not the mana I'm worried about. It's... it's do I have cards in my hands to rebuild after the board is inevitably wiped? So, right. I think the sure. best place that you could put an Explode Ancient is not in a mono green deck, but probably in one that yeah, supports neither. another color. Um, yeah. So if you're doing green, white, green, black, or even a three color, or even four color or five, five color, color. Yeah. Um, anything that can help you propel you that isn't already mono green, because mono green is already really good at making mm -hmm. a craft. Think about like Joda. Cabal Coffers, what? <laughs> yeah, that'd be sick. Or... Joda um, would be awesome. Yeah, Joda or Ramos. I would love this. In my oh yeah, my gosh, that would, that would be, be that'd be super cool. Definitely put um, in Because Ramos would make, because you move, remove the five plus one plus one counters and then you make all that. Math. Fifteen. Oh gosh, yeah, that's pretty cool. I that's love really tapping cool. five lands and casting three Eldrazi. <laughs> oh my gosh. Or Progenitus. Or Progenitus. <laughs> that's awesome. I love it. All right. Uh, the next one we have is Ox in the Box. The Ox in the Box with the Fox. Wearing socks. Like, all right, let's okay. go. Is he even good? <laughs> Well, let's discuss it, and we'll Can we just skip him. That's why we're here. Oh no, yeah, I we'll think, talk about all of the, the mythic verse. Oh, okay, I think it deserves at least a discussion. Ox of Agonis is three red red for a four two ox. When Ox of Agonis enters the battlefield, discard your hand and draw three cards. It can escape for two, black or two red, red red, and exile eight other cards from your graveyard. Ox of Agonis escapes with a plus one plus one counter on it. So my original thoughts of this is this isn't. I try to relate this to every red deck I have because I do have mono red decks and I, I could not think of a point where I'd want X of Agonis in that deck. Even with my Perforous deck, the uh, original Therese Perforous deck where I am getting low on cards, I have other ways of drawing cards that don't <clears throat> have to bank on me having lots of cards in my graveyard. So I, I don't think this is going to be a, a, a commander staple or even in... I'd be surprised to see this in any commander deck. It's yeah. so weird to say that there are better cards in red to draw more to draw cards, cards with, yeah. Or because I mean, if you I, I, rummage if, at the very least, best case scenario, you dump your hand and draw three cards yeah. for five, and then you can escape it a couple times. But there, there are better ways of being able to draw. I mean, you just even just things like Staff of Nin or yeah, I mean, you could do Wheel <laughs> of Fortunes or or, or um, that's expensive. Yeah, the mm -hmm. Magus of the wheel. It's the one that you can tap to draw to and you give it to somebody else. I forget that guy's name. Yeah, I can't remember it. We'll but put him up on screen. We'll put it out uh, to... I, I know which one it is. I just have to go home and find it. But these there there are better ways to do this. So I'm I do not... like that he fuels your graveyard, though. 
at the very least. In, in my mind, I look at him as like a late game top deck. Yeah. This wouldn't be bad. Um, and even like in your graveyard, like in some of the decks that I've played in mono red, um, I run out of cards in hand, and like you spend you spend so many cards like because I I play Zada. Uh, Hedron Grinder. Mm-hmm. I I won't play this in Zada, probably not. Um, but like I do have a lot of cards in my graveyard, and I do run out of cards in my hand because yeah. I, I my curve is so low that I can curve out on turn four and have no cards in hand. Um, and it happens a lot. But I don't know if paying five mana for three cards with the downside of having to discard my hand. Like I I will only play this mm. if I have all lands in my hand or if I have no cards in my hand. Um, I think they're just like you guys said, better ways. But That's I don't. I don't one. think it's the worst card. So no. Okay, moving on. I'll read Pelucranos. Pelucranos Unchained. He is a legendary creature, Zombie Hydra, for two, one black and one green. And he says that he enters the battlefield with six plus one plus one counters on him, and he escapes with twelve plus one plus one counters on it instead. That's sweet. If damage would be dealt to Pelucranos while it has a plus one plus one counter on it, prevent that damage and remove that many plus one plus one counters from it. Okay, seems cool so far, Um, but we keep going. There's more on this guy. You can pay one, one black, and one green, and Pelucranos fights another target creature. And then he escapes for four, one black, and one green, and you have to exile six other cards to escape him from your graveyard. This seems super fun to play. I, I actually really look forward to playing this in my Marin deck, yeah. just for fun. Um, I think that he would be a fun way to remove stuff and then all of a sudden get a 12-12 out of my graveyard. I think any time in a Marin deck that you can substitute uh, a creature for a sor- instant or sorcery, you do that. Um, because oh, you, sure. can reanimate, you can re- reanimate creatures, you can't reanimate instants and sorceries in Marin. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I also played Marin so <laughs> for a long time, but um, just stepping away from the mechanics on the card, I think this is the first Hydra art where it shows the Hydra growing a head back. Right. In fact, it's showing two heads growing back. That I, is I'm way assuming. cool. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, yeah. I, f- I thought that was really neat. Yeah. Um, showing some heads being regrown, <laughs> which is sweet. probably an indicator that he just got done fighting something and he Very lost cool. the two heads. I don't even know actually how Pelucranos died in, in Theros, so you guys will have to comment and tell yeah, me tell about how he does. died. But my first thoughts was give him Persist. Persist, obviously. Give him, yeah, Persist is an ability. Uh, when a, a creature with Persist, when it dies, if it had no minus one, minus one counters, you return that creature to the battlefield as part of the Persist ability with a minus one, minus one counter. So he just comes back with five. With minus five, one, because minus one, minus one, minus one counters and plus one, plus one counters will cancel each other out. So if you were able to have a repeatable way of giving Polacronos persist, you could get infinite ETBs, basically. And so what do you cool. use to give him persist? Uh, there is a Cauldron of Souls that gives something persist. Um, there Mikaeus. are probably... Mikaeus. Yeah, Mikaeus gives all your... Would be awesome. No, I that's think undying. He, that's, that's undying. undying yeah. yeah. Which that could work if you could find a way of like dealing a whole bunch of damage to Polacronos. Like yeah. maybe through fighting. Right. I mean, he, he does remove counters when he fights, mm-hmm. but I think Persist would be, um, it's probably a little bit better. Right. So. I think with, I, I can't think of how to make this into a commander deck. I think this is really more as a support for Golgari type big hits and, you know, graveyard shenanigans. Um, if you wanted to make this into your commander, I'd probably think you'd be going for a Voltron strategy. Um, or Collision of Souls find a way to make him go infinite. I mean, yeah, you could possibly find it. Yeah, this guy, <laughs> this guy is always trying to make yeah. things go infinite. I, Don't feel like you have to do that. I that like is combos. not how people play Magic, Landon. <laughs> In my opinion, as a non-combo player, uh, <laughs> I would probably that automatically invalidates whatever he's about to say. I want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Caleb. That doesn't mean he's validating it. He just probably wants to hear how bad it is. So, <laughs> this side of our the table. opinion of it is that you could probably build like a Voltron strategy to, you know, abuse the, the 12 counters that are coming on it, and you can fight creatures to get them out of your way. Nothing feels worse than having to block a creature that <laughs> oh. you're going to have to try to kill anyway, but it's not going to die. I mean, it's it, it's a cool strategy. If you can tack on something that gives it um, protection from creatures, uh, protection from anything oh, you gross. like yeah Swords. then you can you can 
but it only takes two hits and you could proliferate the counters. I mean, you could double the counters. There's this new card um, that we'll talk about that could double counters as well. Corpse Jack Menace is really Corpse cool. Corpse Jack Menace would be good. Because I'd... when it enters the battlefield, it'll put the counters on itself and Corpse Jack Menace will give it a lot more. Mm-hmm. Same with like uh, Winding Constrictor. If it escapes, it's a 24-24. I don't know. He seems pretty fun. All right, I'm gonna For move both combo to and non-combo. I don't know. I, I, I hope you know I love you, Landon. You're all right, Landon. A lot. I love you guys, too. <laughs> <laughs> Perforos Bronze Blooded is nice. four and a red for a seven six legendary enchantment creature god with indestructible as long as your devotion to red is less than five Perforos is in a creature other creatures you control have haste and for two and a red you may put a creature card or an artifact creature card from your hand onto the battlefield sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step so cool um, so just so you guys this. know we have made a deck tech about this we'll link it up in one of these corners one of the, I'm Peter's pointing over here. One of these corners, this corner right here, above Landon. Above me. Um, uh, that will go into all the details about uh, the cool things you can do with Perfora. So we'll just go into a little bit of details. Super cool that you have a sneak attack esque effect on a commander. I love that it. it's. I mean, I've never seen something like this in red. Arg, raise boar, last set, <laughs> two sets ago, <laughs> exists. <laughs> he doesn't play magic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put a screen in front of him. <laughs> Ilharg is good, but I Ilharg, think that it, this is better. This this is better than Ilharg, and I'll tell you why. And I'll tell you why this is also different from Ilharg, <laughs> and why it's new compared to Ilharg. And I'll tell you why Lennon's wrong. Anyway, uh, Perforos, the fact that you can um, pay this repeatedly, that means that you can put multiple creatures out. Um, and there's going to be ways of being able to bounce them or... Um, well, yeah, if you if you bring something out with his ability, you can, if you activate Sundial at the right time, you can make it so that at your end step, uh, you get to keep the creature instead. Yeah. So. Or you can, um, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah? Or you can what? Say, you, can't, you, can, you can't say anything about this. You can flash <laughs> the creature in after the end step's already begun. That's true. And then you don't have to. That works as well. But mm-hmm. that's more of a defensive strategy, I feel like, if you're... When and use the creature as a blocker. So one of the other reasons why I like Perforos better is that then he's, what? Then Ilhar oh, gotcha. is just that he's more likely to stick around, even though he's not a creature. He, yeah, he's a god. Definitely. So he's he's gonna stick around way he's more absolute than Ilhar. I I wasn't saying that Ilhar was better. Oh, my, yeah. my my point was Tim said that he hadn't seen this ability on a creature before, <laughs> okay, yeah. and I, I had it to was dispute last that. Time. I had to destroy him with facts and logic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. Uh, not geez. part of this. <laughs> not part of this uh, ongoing. I think they're both cool. No. Nah, sneak attack. Sneak attack. Commander. Yeah. Put them together. What do you, you get? get? Perforos. Blightsteel not Colossus Ilhar. hitting people in the face. That's true. Yeah, you can turn one kill people with Blightsteel Colossus. Yeah, I mean, you have Blightsteel Colossus. Turn, turn one? Yeah. Uh, it, it's a god hand. You have to open with a god hand, but there is a hand that you can open with and kill the entire table. How many rituals Colossus. do you need? Yes. <laughs> okay, because I was like, uh... Ah. So it's, um... One Mountain, Mana Vault, Simeon Spirit Guide, Treasonous Ogre, Blightsteel Colossus, Blade of Selves, and Magnetic Thief all in your hand. That's it? Just that. Just the perfect god hand, and it's a turn one kill. Everyone. Sweet. That's awesome. Move from one commander so table to another, why just drawing yeah, and scoping. Yeah, that's cool. Um... <laughs> We should try that out. We should. We should open with a hand like that one time. Yeah. We'll, we'll stack yeah. the top of the deck. Sure, yeah. And, and I'll cut um, your deck, and, and we know it's in the middle. Yeah. yeah. Invite like, a guest hey. and just be like, oh, the <laughs> gameplay video's over. Seven one turns. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys, awesome. for watching this gameplay. <laughs> it's like a minute long. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. You're All never right. going to get that hand. I just I wanted to put that in the notes just for funsies. Cool, Definitely. Yeah. So some, some cool creatures you can get off of it. Obviously, Blightsteel Colossus. Um, a hard, heartless heat at Sugu because Perforos does give it haste. Uh, Dracuseth, you got Neheb. There's a lot of cool, um, powerful, better than Wait, Ilharg yeah, effects that yeah. you can do with Perforos. Moving on, we have Thassa Deep Dwelling. For three and a blue, we have a legendary enchantment creature god with indestructible, and she is not a creature unless your devotion is five. And she doesn't have a Bident this time. She's got an ore. What a loser. Uh, an ore? <laughs> She's just swimming. Yeah. Hell. Well, hey, it could be a Bident. Cure like deep in the water. Me. Cure a solar Bident, though, so it's not oh, a her Bident. Did she report that to the proper authorities? Uh, Hiliod did not give a crap. Ah, oh, jeez. Yeah. That sucks. Find I'm your sorry, own. Dasa. Trident, Bident. 
So what the heck does she do? Um, at the beginning of your end step, you can exile up to one other target creature that you control, and then you immediately return that card to the battlefield under your control. Hmm. And then you can pay three and a blue for an activated ability that says tap another target creature. Yeah, I don't think I really would want her as my commander. Um, Play her in a blink deck. Oh, she's going in my Afara deck. Yeah. So I have a white-blue Afara deck that loves to blink things. And having an, a mana rock, basically, that blinks things... Not really mana rock, sorry. Something that doesn't die that can blink things... Indestructible enchantment. Indestructible yeah. enchantment. That's... I was still thinking about Nylea, because she's cool. <laughs> um, yeah, it's awesome. It's uh, similar to, like, um, Soul Herder, or a Conjurer's Soul Closet. Awesome. Yeah. And both of those cards are amazing in, in blink decks. And sure. it is kind of interesting. You usually don't see this wording on a blink effect, but it returns the creature to the battlefield under your control. So if you've stolen something from somebody, yeah. a lot of blink effects will actually give it back to the owner... Thassa will, will keep it under your control still. Like, you can't do this in my Afara deck, but if you've used, like, in your... If you could play Thassa and Brian, and you use all of your threat and spells, like, um, Active Treason, or all those other ones, and you've taken control of something for the turn, you can blink Thassa, and it's... Under, like in Mariki. Like, you do that all the time in Mariki. You would steal things and find ways of okay. keeping it forever. So this is really good Mariki. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so this, um, this can go into a Mariki deck. This can go into a... Uh, Brago, any, any blink deck. Afara, Aminatu, um, Geese of St. Trath. Uh, I'm throw my Derevi deck. Derevi. Sure. Yeah, no, it's... So utility utility high, but not necessarily a commander own. high. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, I like it. I like it too. I'll pick up a copy. She's way good. Just one? Perhaps. Okay. Uro Titan of Nature's Wrath is one, a green, and a blue for 6-6. Six, six. Another one of these big titans. Um, he says when Uro enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless it escaped. And then whenever Uro enters the battlefield or attacks, you gain three life and draw a card. Then you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Wow, that's a lot of things to that's do. That's three things. That's three things for three mana. That and almost lines up. Yeah, that, that's pretty good. Yeah, would you pay one mana to gain three life? Mm, I probably might. Would you pay one mana to draw a card? For sure. Would you pay one mana to put a land from your hand onto the battlefield untapped? Yes. Wow. Yeah, he's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, he also escapes for two green and two blue. Exile five other cards from your graveyard. People are going nuts over this card. And uh, so I, are the prices. Yeah, I think both the Titans, the fact that they're both pretty decently cheap and they give... Uro's, efficiently costed. Uh, efficiently costed. <laughs> yeah. Uro's effect yeah. is, is a lot... Uh, it's very relative to to a simic color, um, but very powerful. And in the escaping yeah. and everything, like this is obviously very powerful, and it's very um, utilistic. This is going to be a card that doesn't necessarily win you the game, but you can you can point to it as a thing that helped you win in every game that you play it. It's a pretty good engine. Um, it's like growth spiral on a stick, kind yeah, of. Yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I like Growth, Growth Spiral. Spiral. Growth Spiral is really cool. That was good enough to go into my cube for a while, so, like, yeah. it's a great effect. It's, it feels, I mean, I would not feel bad casting this on curve and letting it go to my graveyard and letting it sit there for a couple of turns before I bring it out, and I definitely would not mind swinging with it a couple of times. I think you have oh, to yeah. swing with it twice, and I think it's done pretty good. Yeah, if you yeah, ramped amazing. four times and drawn four cards off of it, I mean, yeah. that's more than most commanders will do in a game. So mm -hmm. that I think the escape mechanic as well as just the the sheer power of the Titans, I think is a do a I, thumbs up. I think they're a little slow in some aspects. Like yeah. you have to cast it and then it goes to your graveyard, then you have to cast it from your graveyard. But if like mm -hmm. your graveyard gets exiled or somebody targets Udo to get exiled... Then he has to go back to the command zone. You have to pay the commander tax. Like it, it's Do a little you play bit slow. This as a commander, you could. Um, Sorry, yeah. I totally interrupted you. Well, yeah. It, uh, yes, that's based if it is in the command zone. Yeah. Um, but it's also good in a Simic. It's good in the ninety nine. Like yeah. imagine this in uh, True Lane. Like you cast this. Oh my gosh. You. True Lane. It basically like doubles what True Lane does. <laughs> yeah, it does. Besides the life gain. Yeah, so. um, Yarrick. I kind of want to put this yeah, in. Yeah, you have to sacrifice it, it twice because Yarek doubles enter the battlefield triggers. Sa double that's sacrifice. Crazy. That's so good. That means you get two in your graveyard. Yeah, that's <laughs> two amazing. Two instead of one. Don't listen to them. All right, guys, that's that's it for the, the Mythic Rares. You made um, it. You made it. You made it through our, our rambling. <laughs>
there, 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 yeah, there's a lot to go through. Um, but just to let you guys know, of course, with any commanders or legendary creatures that you guys have seen, if there's one that you want us to make a deck tech on, please, uh, just comment in the please comment, comment section. Yeah, in the comment section. I got you. Of, uh, thanks, Caleb. <laughs> about which commanders you want to see, um, and we'll definitely uh, do our best to make some deck techs. Or if just cards that you disagree with, um, we'll let us know why you disagree with it. All right, guys, now we're going to move on to the rares. Just keep in mind that we're not going to include all the rares. We're just going to talk about the ones that we feel are per, uh, pertinent to Commando or are so bad that we have to mention them. <laughs> I think or they have really cool art. Yeah, the, the art is, is a big piece in this. So we'll just start by going through all of the legendary creatures that are rare, and then we'll go over the non-legendary mm -hmm. creatures and rare cards. So, cool. Sounds First good. one is Ephemia, the Cacophony. Cacophony. Bless you. Like ah! a funny commander. Cacophony is one in a black for a legendary enchantment creature harpy for two and one, or power tough is two and one for flying. At the beginning of your end step, you may exile an enchantment card from your graveyard. If you do, create a two two black zombie creature token. That's totally how I want to be creating zombie tokens. Oh my gosh, do you realize how thing? many enchantments you can get in your graveyard in the game? <laughs> this is not great. Turn 30, listen, listen, turn 30. Hear me out. You get all the enchantments into your graveyard. Let's say you have 30 in your deck and you exile them all. You now have 30 two twos that can die by a board wipe. So not not a super awesome effect on a commander. Don't love Ephemia. Uh, no, I mean, it's two, it's two mana, but it, the fact that you need to play a lot of enchantments to get them into your graveyard, then at once per turn, you can create a two two. There is so many better things yeah, you can the do. The strategy that it's pulling you in it's not pulling you strong enough in. Mm -hmm. It's not pulling you strong in enchantment or token making. No. So right next, Arasta of the Endless Web. <clears throat> Two colors, green, green for a legendary enchantment creature spider. It has reach. Uh, whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery spell, you get to make a one two green spider creature token with reach and arasta is a three five wait spiders have reach but not nylea yeah well spiders um <laughs> spiders have lots of eyes i think that makes sense to me. she's keen eyed well no, no she only has two keen eyes that's i think it's a, i think that's an at ironic least five. it's an ironic term <laughs> the art on this is cool spoder yeah. yeah i think it's dope oh uh, i like arasta's cool yeah you can make a lot of spiders depending on who you're playing against i wish that they were uh, two ones as opposed to one twos because yeah. you could clamp them with skull clamp and that'd be really cool. Um, I think it's just a unique effect. I don't think it's necessarily powerful or um, like a ex like a really green like a really strong green commander. I just think that the effect is pretty cool and it would be fun to build around it. I know that a lot of people have built uh, Golgari spider decks, so it'd be cool to put her in there. Um, I think definitely Ishkana. In, yeah, Ishkana is a definitely good because <clears throat> she uh, she makes your opponents lose life equal to how many spiders oh, you spiders, control. Yeah. And then with Arasta making all those tokens, you can kind of yeah. blow your opponents up. So super good addition to that. I don't know if creating. I mean, in a well, game, opponents cast a lot of instants and sorcery, so you're gonna get a lot of spiders. But it's like, how can you utilize those spiders in the best way? Blockers. So yeah, I mean, blockers. You really want to use this in probably more aristocrats. So I think um, Corvold. Corvold is gonna love Corvold. this. Uh, I it'd think be decent it's, in my throw mock deck, but I think I'd still prefer like a tender shoot dryad. Yeah, it's nice. Sure. It's nice though that like tribes get just support, random support throughout. Yeah. Like, like magic anybody who's playing Ishkana saw this card and was like, this "Super is stoked!" Yeah, me. and like I, I like that because there are like pet tribes that I have. Like I, I love Merfolk, so like. Any merfolk. merfolk tribe, it's just yeah, it's cool to get merfolk. If throughout. you're playing an Ishkana deck, this card is for you, mm -hmm. specifically built for you. Yep, I like it. Next, we've got Atris, Oracle of Half Truths. She is, or is that a he? Uh, this person. This Atris. person, Atris, this individual is a uh, two and a blue and a black for a three-two with menace. That's pretty much the whole thing. Okay, so it's got another ability that says, when Atra's Oracle of Half-Truths enters the battlefield, target opponent looks at the top three cards of your library and separates them into a face-down pile and a face-up pile. Put one pile into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Ooh, tricky. I mean, that's kind of fun. I would like to play this and just, like, you know, like, out-gamble my opponents or or... or 
if somebody uses on me, I would have fun trying to make them choose the pile that doesn't have as much stuff. But could politic the crap out of this, like, hey, give me a board wipe. This dude's got a crazy board. Mm-hmm. Let's wipe it. So yeah. just yeah, that happens. It yeah. does. I mean, as, but as, only digging three cards deep. I don't know. I think that's a little underwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you think factor fiction costs four. <laughs> and that gives you fiction. way deeper into mm-hmm. your deck. Yeah. So that Mysterious I, phone just entered and told us about Fortune's Favor, which is essentially the instant card that does this for a but same mana. It's a little bit better. I think it's better too. Yeah, it is better. It's I, easier to cast because it's only three and a blue. And it's an instant. And like He's just a body, like... But does it have Menace? <clears throat> You're right, you got, you got me there, bud. Menace. A 3-2 with Menace, that's all you need. So is this good in something where we can blink it over and over again? I think possibly. I, I don't know. I don't think this is necessarily at all good as a commander deck, but if you wanted to support this in some sort of Demir control deck, or um, even like a Lazav, either of the Lazavs, where you can put things into your graveyard. The Demir Mastermind only cares about things in your opponent's graveyards. Oh, does it? Yeah. That's a shame. You gotta use the old one. Mm-hmm. Gotta use, yeah. Okay. No, the old one only cares about right. things in your or, opponent's graveyard. Or, sorry, the new one. The new one. Multifarious. Yep. Multifarious. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if you can find a way to blink this, you can get some... Uh, things out of this but yeah. i think I mean, at, it's at nice best that, it's nine like, nine half one pile is going into your graveyard maybe if you're like in a reanimator deck you'll get lucky but i don't know if your opponent knows that you're in a reanimator deck they're not going to give you the thing that you want in your graveyard i don't know it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right moving on next we have dalakos crafter of wonders for one blue red you get a two four legendary creature merfolk artificer mm, wonderful tap it to add two colorless spend this mana only to cast artifact spells or activate abilities of artifacts equip creatures you control have flying in haste Whoa. so i mean this i do like that yeah i mean giving artifact or giving your creatures flying in haste for any equipment that's put on a mining mean, that's that's pretty cool. There's lots of equipments that you can now attach for nothing because of uh, Dalakos, or just ones that equip for nothing. I mean, you have a Lightning Greaves that can just give it anything flying. You could play him, equip him with the boots, and now he has haste and he can tap for two. That's amazing. That is pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> BS and over here. I mean... Yeah. I, I, I mean, at best, it's, oh it's just gosh. a... Um, a soul ring for artifacts and artifact uh, spells. That's, I don't think that's that's terrible. Yeah, I think a, the ability to give them flying in haste, that's pretty cool. And it's only three mana. And uh, is it is definitely a artifact and equipment heavy color. So I think this is yeah. a... I haven't seen something like this on a commander um, before giving things flying in haste. I think the mana... Being able to spend the mana to activate abilities or artifacts will be more relevant than using the mana to cast artifacts. I, I agree. Just leave it at that. Sure. And I think yeah. probably mm-hmm. the thing that you care about the most is the creatures you control flying in haste. I think this is going to be more yeah. of a go wide or go heavy equipment I, strategy. I like that they haven't really done anything like this in Is It as far as I can think of. So this uh, it's something new. There's like renowned weaponsmith. I think it's what it is. No, there is there is a blue guy that taps mana. That it's Renown one, Smith, I think. Is it? Okay. Yeah, it's the one that gets the From vial. Origins, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it gets Heart Piercer Vile. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Mm. But um, it's not super strong. No. It's just okay. I don't think he is either. I think he's okay. Well said. Moving on. Ah, uh, yes. <clears throat> uh, it's party time. It's party time. Galia of the Endless Dance. It is red and a green for a legendary creature, Seder. It has haste. Other Seders you control will get plus one, plus one, and half haste. A spasm. Whenever you attack with three or more creatures, you may discard a card at random. And if you do, you get to draw two cards. Hmm. But? But what? You have to you have to discard a card at random. No, I'm saying, like, what do you think? What do I think? But Seders. Yeah, I mean... But that Seder, though. I guess this is a finally my Seder Wayfinder has a home. <clears throat> oh, there you go. And my uh, Seder Wanderer that untapped lands. If I made this deck, so even with Thurus Beyond Death, there's not any fantastic Seders that have come out. And even without fantastic Seders, there is less than 20 Seders in the history of Magic. And none of them are really that, like, incredible. So Galia isn't, is not yet, I should say, a viable. Uh, tribe 
However, you could make some use off of the second ability to attack and, and discard randomly and draw cards. I mean, there's there's potential for something there. Attacking oh, no. three, three or cre- more Three or more creatures. creatures. How, how often do you do that in a game? Oh, uh, well, if you build your deck around it, it'll okay. happen pretty often. Um, but Can we but agree, though, that this is satyrs? A... With nothing but satyrs in your deck? No, you don't. You don't have to. You don't have to, um, no. okay. Because... You just play um, a green, yeah, red, go Yeah, because it doesn't wide. care if you're attacking with satyrs. <laughs> That's it just, true. It cares if you're attacking with creatures. Um, just like an aggro deck, I guess. But, like, it kind of um, it kind of gets rid of one of the downsides to playing aggro, where you run out of cards in your hand. That's true. And only having to discard one card... It's not bad, I guess, but you it's do, random. Yeah, you do have to discard. So as long as you're keeping a land card in your hand when you attack, you but can it's discard random, it. Right? Well, if you have oh, one if card. if you have one card, yeah. yeah. Right. I could think of decks that would want this in the 99. Can we agree, though, that this is a better gruelled uh, commander, commander than, than Clothis? Clothis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah? All right. I mean, if by better you mean that gives you that card advantage, <laughs> yeah. It's potentially. That dude's not having fun, though. Just no, he fine. is not. Rakdos? Sure. I okay. keep thinking that this guy has two heads. <laughs> his hair looks like another, <laughs> like like from a distance, like, and like the way his spear is going. Oh yeah, it, it looks like there's another yeah, guy there's back another there, like defending. Him. Yeah, yeah, him. it really does. <laughs> <He's just> like, <laughs> Hactos the unscarred is two red, two white. He's a six one. Really wish he was a seven one. And he attacks each combat if able. As he enters the battlefield, you choose two, three, or four at random. And then he has protection from each converted mana cost. Do you just close your eyes and choose one? Other than the chosen number. Uh, four! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank goodness. That was random, That's exactly right? what I needed. <laughs> so, a really terrible version of Pelucrinos. Or not Pelucrinos. Uh, protection from everything? Progenitus. Progenitus. Jeez. Anyway. This is just like a terrible, terrible version of Progenitus. Uh, we just me. want Boros think. to be... Every time there's a Boros commander that comes out, every soul and fiber in my being is like, maybe this will be the day that we get a Boros commander that lets us draw cards or do something different. Or be as fun as Feather. Or be as fun as Feather. And they give us this. Same and, old boring Boros. I mean, it is cool that you get protection from everything that's not a certain... Uh, mana cost like if somebody doesn't have a converted mana cost creature with three then essentially it's unblockable and removal spells have to be that mana cost so it's got pseudo protection and maybe you can do kind of like a voltron-esque strategy um but you'd have to attack a lot of times and the fact that you have to attack i mean this what are the chances that he does throughout the game um 63 points of commander damage. Highly unlikely. He has to do 63 damage. Yeah. I don't think it's happening. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it, it is kind of sad. Because, like, you look at Feather and you look at Fire Song and Sunspeaker. Fire Song and Sunspeaker would be a lot better if they were a little bit more efficiently costed. Um, mm-hmm. But that's, like, a, a cool strategy outside of the Boros. Yeah, we attack things. Mm-hmm. All right, here we go. We've got Kuneros, Hound of Athreos. For one white, black, a 3-3 legendary creature. Hound, Vigilance, Menace, Lifelink. Creature cards in graveyards can't enter the battlefield. And players can't cast spells from graveyards. Now, this card is is hard in a couple ways. I think the first reason being is black-white is the strategy of creature recursion and graveyard shenanigans. I really want to play him in my Athreos deck. I don't well, know. Not necessarily. There's Golgari too, but like that most black-white decks have to do with the graveyard at some point. And this seems... I mean, you just look at Athreos. This is the Hound of Athreos and stop Athreos from doing anything. <laughs> like that doesn't make any sense. You'd think that the Hound of Athreos would help the strategy so Athreos is basically a god and is trying to recur things and the dog barks and he's like oh i guess you're right buddy whoop well said (laughs) good job you're right Um, so uh, yeah this is but we just complained about boros only sticking to one strategy over and over again but maybe this is like let's step outside of the reanimator strategy and look at a more stacks build boros doesn't stab itself in the back well, you like cards. think like about when like, you attack, um, you lose five Kambal. life. Like, <laughs> what'd you say? Like Kambal, uh, the guy. Yeah. Um, whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, 
he does two damage to them, you draw and you gain two life. I think. All right, this would be great if it said a, p- opponents can't cast creature spells from their graveyards, but it just says right. and nobody can. Well, you, it should. Yeah. Well, opponents. you just you just build your deck in such a way that that's not a downside to you, right? That's you just, true. You play stacks. So you play. You play stacks. You play or life gain. Like or, leyline of the void and rest in peace and like. My inner Marin player just hates seeing. Well, yeah. This well, my my so inner much. Kess player like that. This yeah. card significantly hurts me. Because I, I, li- I I like this card a lot. I just number one, I hate that it's the Hound of Athros and it stops Athros. Yeah, flavor wise, flavor fail. Yeah, flavor fail. But like, <clears throat> like setting the flavor aside, it's that effect isn't bad. No, it's not, and it's very no. good, and it, it hoses a lot of strategies. But like half of the black white decks that are around do have graveyard interaction, and now. Half of those decks can't include... Well, well, he's on the battlefield. Sure, I'm not saying that this is a bad card. I'm just saying well, that the flavor... Yeah. It's a flavor fail. And I think it, it's a feel bad for... Like, even with my Regna and Crab deck, I have a, I have stuff that comes from Graveyard. It's just because with Black-White, there's a lot of things... Like, even just a Revelar combo, um, this this doesn't make me feel like this is an appropriate um, card to put in these colors. Not saying that it's not good. It is very good, and it hoses a lot of strategy. Well, it's just it's a different strategy, right? Yeah. Like you wouldn't. Yeah, I think if if those downsides hurt you, then you built your deck wrong. Basically, mm-hmm. like you have to build differently around it. Next up, we have Terranica, 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 Crowan Sword, Crowan Veteran, one white white for a legendary creature, human soldier with vigilance. Whenever she attacks, you untap another target creature you control until end of turn. That creature has base, power, and toughness 4-4 and gains indestructible. Hmm. And her flavor text says, I like to think Kithian keeps watch over all of us. Oh, Oh, I didn't even read that. I okay, read now it. I like this card. That's precious. Yeah, I don't not, a, not a good uh, commander. Not that great. I mean, gosh, if, if white and red could just have a thing that says when this creature attacks... You win the game. Deuce the- <laughs> When this creature attacks, <laughs> do something like draw a card, or like there, there just needs to be more Give of that. Give us value. Give please. us value and like base power and check this four for like, gosh. Obviously, this is probably more for limited, and I, I shouldn't be too harsh on this card because I don't think this was printed specifically for commander. No. Okay, next we've got Thrix, the Sudden Storm. For three and two blue, you get a four five with flash and flying, and spells you cast. With converted mana cost five or greater, cost one less to cast, and can't be countered. Hmm. I like flying. I like flash. I don't like five drop blue legendary creature as a commander for sure. Yeah, I mean, giving you a discount on those big spells, that means you have to be playing big spell tribal. And that's not a fun... <sighs> That there is, are better ways to play a big spell tribal. There's definitely better ways to play big spells. You'd probably rather just play a Simic deck so you can ramp up to there uh, so you have the mana to cast multiple spells. Um, he's going to be a beast in limited, I feel he like. He is. He's going to be really good in limited, and he's just looks really cool. He does look cool. Unless for real. Cool. Like, Thassa is definitely the coolest cool. of the gods. Uh, I think that's all we have to say about no, that Perforous. one. It's, what? Perforous isn't the coolest? Perforos is definitely up there as well. Okay. Thassa and Perforos. Not a lot to say about Thrix, really. I still think it's too hard to rely on him being on the battlefield. It's just not worth it. It's it's too hard to justify him as mm-hmm. a spellslinger style commander. I agree. Yeah. It's way too hard. It's not worth it. All right, that's all of the rare uh, legendary creatures. We're going to quickly go through the uncommon legendary creatures, and then we're just going to go through the rares that we care about. And then maybe talk about some uncommons and comments that we think are important. And by go through the uncommon legendaries, I mean like we might skip a few. We I'll include all of them, <laughs> uh, but we'll only talk about a uh, two or three. So um, the first one we have is Illyrios Enraptured, Annex Hardened in the Forge, Caliphi, Beloved of the Sea, Daxos, Blessed of the Sun, Eutropia, the Twice Favored, Renata, Call to the Hunt, Siona, Captain of the Pileus, and Timurat chosen from death. Quickly wanted to mention Daxos uh, for white, white, a two star. Uh, Daxos toughness is equal to your devotion to white. And whenever another creature you control enters the battlefield or dies, you gain one life. So it's a, it's a combination of the soul sisters. Um, it's better than Linden. 
it's definitely better than Linden, and this would go great in a Heliod deck if you're just trying to put a lot of uh, enter the battlefield, gain some life. I do it like can, that. Yeah, assist you, and just I think you'd be surprised how much life this will gain you over the course of the game. For sure. I like that it's enters or dies, mm -hmm. so you're getting a lot more than you think yeah. at first glance. So we've got Eutropia, the twice favored. She is one, a green, and a blue for a 2-2, two, two. <clears throat> and she's got Constellation, which is a returning ability, and it says, whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. That creature gains flying until end of turn. It's all right. I mean, <laughs> so, it goes great in a band enchantment deck where you can just give something flying and... Uh, something big? Yeah, something big flying, give yeah. it some evasion. I mean, you'd be surprised how much that's um, a valid keyword to put on something to hit into an opponent. Do you play her as a commander, though? I would that's, not play her as a commander. No, I mean, you can have that's a band what... strategy that's way better. Yeah. I'd put her in the 99 for sure. Yeah, definitely an enchantment like thing. Not bad. Next, we've called Renata, Call to the Hunt. For two green, green, we've got a star three. Uh, Renata's power is equal to your devotion to green, and each other creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it. So this would go... I mean, this could be good in an elf deck. Or, or those persist decks. Or a persist yeah. decks with a Woodfall Primus and a Sack Outlet. Cool. Destroy everybody's lands. Like um, Amazing. <laughs> the best thing you can do in Commander. <laughs> Please go on home and do yeah, that. Do it. Yeah, do yeah, it. We'll yeah, you'll do it. never be invited back to <laughs> um, any Sorry. Any green or even like a, an Azuri deck, Azuri Claw of Progress, or even a mono green Azuri. Something that you're casting a lot of creatures and wanting to even like a track show where you want to proliferate uh, counters. I think th th this is a good card to put in the 99. Wouldn't play this as a commander. Um, there's just better green or even more than green multicolored creatures that can do this type of effect. Yeah. Just much sure. better. Next, we've got a commander that feels like it should be a rare. <laughs> uh, Siona, captain of the Peleus. One, a green and a white. Legendary creature, human soldier. When she enters a battlefield, you get to look at the top seven cards of your library. Whoa. You may reveal an aura card from among them and put it into your hand and the rest go on the bottom of your library in a random order. Seven cards is very deep. For That's crazy. Yeah. That's awesome. Super good. And then whenever an aura you control becomes attached to a creature you control, you create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. That's pretty sweet. I like it. Um, so obviously the most notable thing with her is with an enchantment called Shielded by Faith. Yeah. Um, so one white white enchantment and when it has indestructible. Sorry, the creature that it is enchanting has indestructible. And whenever a creature enters a battlefield, you can actually move Shielded by the Faith from the creature it's currently enchanted to the creature that just entered the battlefield. Combo? Which is a combo with Siona, because Siona will see the Shielded by Faith hitting another creature. She'll make a token. Shielded by Faith will see the token and become attached to it. Siona will see that, make another token, and all of a sudden you've got <laughs> infinite creature tokens. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually doing a deck tech on this. Cool. No wonder. It's combos, I like combos. And uh, I've got a pretty spicy combo. brew for this commander so yeah we'll not go into it much just stay tuned for the deck tech that's coming out uh, yep. for siona be sweet all right that's all that we're going to talk about with the legendary creatures uh for this for the set uncommon yeah cycle. for the uncommon so let's go yeah. ahead and go through uh the rares again we're only talking about the ones that we want to talk about uh if you have one that you think is very important to commander just comment in the uh comment section we'd be more uh, than happy to give our opinion on it yeah definitely sure, so um and let you know what we think and listen to your what you guys think. So the first one that I want to talk about is a card called Dryad of the Heising Grove. That is one powerful Nike boy. Oh, it's, he's been waiting all day to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need? Can you go home now? Uh, <laughs> yeah, see you guys. I'm actually out of here. <laughs> For two and a green, uh, we have a two-four enchantment creature nymph. You may play an additional land on each of your turns. Woo. That's already really good. However, lands you control are every basic land type in addition to their other types. Whoa. That's absolutely incredible. It's a combination of exploration and prismatic omen. Already, the stats are pretty good. It avoids a lot of like uh, shocks and little kills um, or kill spells and effects. Blocks but well. having that combination yeah. of being able to play an additional land and being able to tap your mana for any color, I think in any 
multicolored deck, especially five color decks, this is going to be a dream come true. Uh, especially in decks that play five colors, that play more lands than most because they need to get to that five color, um, five color point, are going to really love this card. Yeah, I'm throwing him right into my Jota deck. Th this is a this is a fantastic green card. Yeah, I highly rate this card. Boom, ten out of ten. Okay, we've got another saga. It is Elspeth Conquers Death. It costs three and two white. And the first part of the saga says, Exile target permanent and opponent controls with converted mana cost three or greater. So we've got some nice removal there. And then the next turn you'll get non-creature spells your opponent's cast cost two more to cast until your next turn. And then the third one is return target creature or planeswalker from your graveyard to the battlefield. Put a plus one plus one counter or a loyalty counter on it. It's pretty darn good. I mean, we haven't seen this kind of effect in white for a long time. Yeah, I really like the the last ability. The last ability is really cool. Return something and then if it's planeswalker, give it the loyalty or creature plus one plus one counter. I think I think that's pretty awesome. In yeah, white. I don't know if there's another white spell that can put a planeswalker from your graveyard onto the battlefield. I can't think of one. Or at least mono white. Right. We'll have to look. But yeah, super cool card. I mean, um, there's like Faith's Reward that returns Yeah, there's all Faith's permanent, Rewards. But like. Specifically. Specific. And even if it first comes out. Or that gives I, the flexibility between a creature or a planeswalker. That's yeah, yeah that's exist. why it's that so That certainly good. doesn't exist, yeah. And even just dropping out, even if it gets killed before the third step, I don't think you'd feel bad dropping a five man enchantment that uh, exiles a. A god. It can yeah, get rid exile of the a god. Gods. It can exile. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the Eldrazi Titans that can exile something that's being pesky, you know. These are, it's good effects. And then the second ability I don't think is too relevant. Um, probably by turn five, people are probably going to not mind paying two more if they want to cast on creature spells. It'll hinder their turn, though. I For mean, it'll sure. it'll limit the amount of things that they can do. Definitely. But I think one and three are definitely the, the powerhouses on this saga. Okay, next we have... Enigmatic Incarnation. It's an enchantment for two, a green, and a blue. At the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice another enchantment. If you do, search your library for a creature card with, with converted mana cost equal to one plus a sacrificed enchantment's converted mana cost. Put that card onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. So that is like a birthing pot or a pot effect, um, turning an enchantment into a creature that's a little bit bigger than that enchantment's converted mana cost. Pretty cool. Don't think we've ever seen turning enchantments into creatures. I was um, so sad when I realized that yeah, it, is it was not a creature. Yeah, it's I just was enchantments. Super excited at first. Um, it seems like the Bant enchantment deck has gotten a lot of goodies from this set, which oh, seems obvious. Sure. Yeah. Um, but like, this is one of those cards that you have to build around. Um, this is not you don't birthing just, pod. Yeah, you don't just put this in any deck that you would want birthing pod in. You have to like, like build your deck around it. So Definitely. I mean, it's pretty powerful within that deck. Yeah. But it's not super versatile like a brewing pot is. It's very specific, definitely. Um, Specifically being Simic as well. You but like this it. will probably be cheaper than Birthing Pod. Birthing Pod's kind of an expensive card. So yeah. like if you're in an enchantment deck and you want Birthing Pod, you can just play this instead of Birthing Pod. So. Definitely. Pretty good. Okay. The next it's one definitely not bad. Uh the next one that we're going to talk about, it's Erebos' intervention for black and X and instant. Choose one. Target creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn. Then you gain X life. Or exile to twice X cards from graveyards. I really like this card, not only because of the art, pretty sweet art. Erebos is just the dopest looking god, um, but the the flexibility of this card to be able to either hit a uh, graveyard or graveyard shenanigans deck, or remove something that's either indestructible or even not indestructible if you're just <clears throat> trying to get rid of it. Or I mean, worst case scenario, you gain some some life uh, real quick. I think this is a really good budget include into interaction in your decks. Yeah, I think it takes care of a lot of things that you're normally not able to take care of. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to have another one of those kind of toxic deluge-esque effects of the minus X minus X. Definitely. On the creature. It's not all creatures. It's not nearly as good as toxic deluge, but no. still pretty awesome. Definitely. So here we have intervention. It's an instant. That's white. X, white, white. Choose one, destroy X target artifacts and or enchantments, or target player gains twice X life. <laughs> it's pretty good uh, being able to 
blow up artifacts and or enchantments at instant speed is very nice and being able to hit more than one is really nice um is this an auto include in any deck or is it i think that's a meta call yeah like if you know that your playgroup runs a lot of enchantments and artifacts that you want to blow up all at once that'd be nice but like i think cleansing nova is probably just better i don't know um or like disenchant or uh naturalize or like return to nature For is sure. a new but the fact that it's instant speed and like it has that flexibility of being able to gain twice x life if you're looking for a card like that in your deck, might as well slot it in, but like, I think it just depends on your meta. I definitely like that you've got the two modes on all of these cards. Yeah. It's really nice. And I like that some of them are instant speed. So, yeah. it's a nice bonus. Next. We've got Idealic Tutor. Do we want to talk about that? Well, I think we just mentioned that it's in the set and it's, reprinted. It's a great reprint. Hopefully brings down the price. Um, I, I checked today and at least on pre-orders, it's like seven dollars as of yeah. today as, of as opposed us filming to 30 this. compared to the lorwin yeah the lorwin yeah. is still or whatever that was from it's not lorwin even tied or yeah. tied, something like that. it's yeah. still up there 25 30 bucks so this is a great reprint this is what we like to see so moving on next one we have is labyrinth of scophos which is land taps for a colorless or four and tap remove target attacking or blocking creature from combat so notes are all alternative to maze of Ith. Um, Peter made a good point that Thematic Compass slash Spires of Veraska is just probably better than this. The, ta the fact that you have to tap four and tap it, that's five mana in total to be able to remove something from combat, that doesn't feel very good. And I, I probably would not play this in a deck that wasn't really heavy control, that is going to have a lot of open mana. So this also says blocking creatures, because with Maze of Ith, it's just an attacking creature, right? Mm -hmm. But it's pretty much still the same thing, because if you don't like that your attacking creature is getting blocked by whatever creature, you just remove your own creature with Maze of Ith. So it's really not worth the extra four, right? I suppose if you had Polar Kronos, and it has 12 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, you gave it Trample, you remove the blocking creature from mm -hmm. combat, and 12 goes through. Does it? Is that worth it? Is it? No, I think it would just trample over, because it was still blocked. Yeah, just before the fight. It's true. I mean, there's a little um, bit of versatility, but yeah, I definitely rather have a Maze of Ith or a Spires of Veraska more. Next up, we've got Nylia's Intervention Sorcery X Green Green Two Modes. First, search your library for up to X land cards. Reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. Second mode. Nylea's Intervention deals twice X damage to each creature with flying. So Nylea, for some reason on this card, <laughs> can hit things with flying. I don't know, man. It seems kind of like a conspiracy. Um, I think that's appropriate. Everybody... Sorry. She needs reach! <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I, no, it's okay. I think it's appropriate because the thing is, Nylea hasn't had reach, even in the last Thero set. All the guards got together and saw that Nylea has a bow and doesn't use it to shoot anything down. So they're like, you know what? We need an intervention. We need to go in and stop this. So they had a Nylea's intervention and they finally figured it out. And she can finally hit things with flying only when she's intervened. Only then. Only and then. it's only flying creatures. Only mm -hmm. flying creatures. But however, art on this one is absolutely spectacular. Uh, uh, very good job to yeah, Zezu Chen, Zezu Chen uh, for this fantastic art. I like the first mode. Uh, it's X lands, not basic lands. So like, yeah. if you are in a lands matter deck, like Golas, um, like if you're looking for like a Mazes End combo, you could tutor up all the guild gates. And if you or... have a bunch of land, you could just pull all the lands out of your deck. Yeah, this isn't ramp, by the way. Like, do not use this card as ramp. It does not put them into the battlefield. It puts them into your hand. Um, but if you're looking for, like, maybe um, Merit Lage, Thespian Stage combo, that could work. That's cool. Um, but, yeah. Or Herb or Cabal Coffers. Yep. Always for two yeah, It's not that's... the first time we've been able to do this in green, though. Next, we have Nyx Lotus for four mana. It's a legendary artifact. Nyx Lotus enters the battlefield tapped. You can choose a color and tap it to add any amount of mana of that color equal to your devotion to that color. So this well, feels like Nykthos, um, except on an artifact for four. Um, 
Enter tapped. It does enter tapped. I like this card. I think this is a really good butter option for those who don't want to play Nykthos, because Nykthos is the $15, $20 card. But I it was think. reprinted in the set, wasn't it? No, Nykthos is not in the set. Oh, I thought it was. No, okay. I wish Nykthos was in the set, but yeah, no, we've got Nyx awesome. Lotus. So this is this is really cool. Um, if you're playing a monocolor deck, um, this is definitely the type of thing that you want to see. For me, with my mono decks, mm. I like this a lot. Um, I don't think in three colors or four colors you want to play this, but maybe two color. Uh, two, two color colors decks. Limit, for sure. Yeah, two colors a limit. But definitely a cool budget option to nick those. Um, the thing is, I I think um, Gilded Lotus is just better. Gilded more Lotus, liable. Gilded Lotus doesn't enter tapped. It does cost one mana more. But like, the thing is, I try not to play cards in my deck that um, are only good like a small, like a certain portion of the time. Yeah. Um, and like. This feels really bad to play after a board wipe. I guess like a counter <laughs> devotion, so like, a, like if you have enchantments or like planeswalkers that didn't die from a board wipe, you can still get some mana out of it. But it it's feels like it's probably better time. in a combo to some extent because if you're trying to like use it multiple times in one turn and win that turn, that's okay. But like it feels really bad to play on an empty board. Like if you kept a hand and this is your only source of ramp, I don't know, it might feel kind of bad. But. So ceiling is very high. But the floor, floor feels really is, bad. Yeah. All right, so we've got Perforos's. It's X and red. It's a sorcery, and it's got two modes, just like the other interventions. And it's set. The first one is create an X one red elemental creature token with trample and haste. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step, or Perforos's intervention deals twice X damage to target creature or planeswalker. So. This is an alright card. Yeah. I'm not in love with it. I'm I'm not either. That's decent creature or planeswalker removal in a mono red deck, maybe. I, I, yeah, I, I think this is a, a, a good with budget one option. token that yeah. you pumped a whole bunch of mana into. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, I'd prefer a, a, an X red spell that can hit my opponent's face. Yeah. I mean, I guess, I guess it kind of can because the elemental it's got is going to hit and it has trample. But, but you're not prefer... guaranteed. I definitely prefer um, Electro Dominance. Um, yeah, you have a uh, fight with fire, which is another good one. Yeah. Or like red sun Zenith. Yeah. Red sun mm -hmm. Zenith. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not the best intervention. Cool art though. Satessan champion two in a green human warrior creature with the uh, mechanic constellation. So it triggers whenever an enchantment enters a battlefield under your control. And when that happens, you can put a plus one plus one counter on Satessan champion and you get a draw a card. Ooh. So you can add this to the list of enchantresses that let you draw cards whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control. So with yeah. Verdurin Enchantress, Argothian Enchantress, Enchantress's Presence, there's a whole slew of creatures and enchantments that care about, that draw you a card whenever another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control. Um, I'm putting this in my Siona deck. Um, like it's an auto-include. It seems super powerful. So you're going to see more of that card later. Yeah, I really like it. So, cool. I'm going to talk about the Shadow Spear. Go for it. I love this card. So it is a legendary artifact equipment for one, and it equips for two, and equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, and has trample and lifelink. And then it's got another ability on it that you can pay one and permanence your opponent's control, lose hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. This card is awesome. I love how, how cheap it is to play, how cheap it is to equip, and how cheap it is to activate the ability. Um, you can kill gods with this. So that sounds pretty awesome. Yeah. But I'm mostly excited to put this into my Jai deck. For those who have seen uh, my deck tech, I have as many equipments in there with lifelink as possible to make that deck work. I just think that this is all around a great card. It's pretty cool. Um, I like the art. Yeah, the, the art is really cool. I I just love how cheap it is. I would expect something like this to be more expensive to play, more expensive to equip, equip for mm -hmm. sure. I mean, you're getting trample and lifelink on a creature. So, mm -hmm. and and that that ability isn't nothing either. You there's can, a lot of indestructible things in commander, and there's a lot hexproof. of hexproof. proof. Yeah, uh, a lot of times an opponent equipping their commander with like the boots or greaves that can be very hard to deal with and sometimes can secure them a win. Yeah, or if you're playing so, against somebody with a Narset deck, mm -hmm. like they put so much into getting that Narset out thinking that it's good because it's got Hexproof, well, mm -hmm. JK, it doesn't anymore. Mm -hmm. 
plot twist. Yep. Definitely a something that can win you or stop somebody else from winning the game. Do really. I like it a lot. I really like this card. Next we've got Thos's Intervention. For blue, blue, and X, we've got another intervention. Instant choose one. Uh, look at the top X cards of your library. Put up to two of them into your hand and the rest in the bottom of your library in any uh, random order. Or counter target spell unless its controller pays twice X. I really like this card. Honestly, this is very blue flavor. The fact that you can either have card draw or counter on one spell, that's 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 pretty hip. I that's like that cool. a lot. So it's definitely very flexible. If you need a counter spell at the time, you can really counter mostly everything i mean paying twice x if you put four mana into this they have to pay four i mean most of the time you're going to counter a spell or you can get a drawn from dreams or uh, dig through time-esque effect to to cycle through your hands i'm definitely going to put this in um Atemsis and uh any other mono blue deck i have next up is another very blue card we have Thassa's Oracle. It is a creature Merfolk Wizard that costs blue blue. And it has an Enter the Battlefield to trigger. Let's read what that is. It's, when, okay. it's decent. When Thassa's Oracle enters the battlefield, look at the top X cards. Does it say X? It says that's, X. That's pretty cool. Um, of your library where X is your devotion to blue. Um, put up to one of them on top of your library and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. That seems bad. Seems why would you ever play, why would you ever play this card? Why did we sing about blue? this song? I know, that's I mean, crazy. sing about this card. Oh, wait, there's more words. Sorry, <sighs> guys, I'm dyslexic. Um, if X is greater than or equal to the number of cards in your library, you win the game. Whoa. Wow, well, isn't that neat? And enter the battlefield win con. I actually don't think there's too many of those. And I can enter the battlefield win con? Like, a card that enters a battlefield, if you meet conditions, you win the game. I don't think there's very many of those. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. That's pretty cool. Um, so this replaces Laboratory Maniac in a lot of decks that were playing Laboratory Maniac. Um, just basically a more compact win con. Um, with Laboratory Maniac, you have to cast Laboratory Maniac, remove all the cards from your library, and then find a way of drawing a card, which seems trivial, but sometimes is kind of hard. Um, Thoth says Oracle, you just exile your library, cast it, and you could win the game. Um, you can do that? Yeah, you can do that. Uh, there's a darker side of EDH, um, <laughs> a side in which I like to reside, um, that deals with super gross combos like that. Um, but yeah, it's, um, I like these effects. Uh, I have... I could talk about this card for a long time, but Go I'm, not, for it. I'm not going to on this episode. Maybe uh, <laughs> Go for we'll it. do it in one of it, our uh, it will be, podcasts. It will probably be in one of our a, combo a future videos. deck talk, deck deck, or yeah, one of our combo videos that we're planning on doing. Cool. Um, but I'm going to be putting this in a lot of decks. So I think if you're playing a male strategy, for instance, if you're playing Finax, this could be a way to help you win without having can Finax mill you. Yes. Okay. Target player. So target player. Um, you can really uh, one of the great downsides to Finax is if somebody else has an Eldrazi or something that shuffles like things back. blessing or something. Uh, anything like that, then you're really struggling. But if you do it to yourself, you could potentially have Thassa's Oracle, and then you only have to mill one person's deck instead of three. Um, so even outside of CDH, this is a, a really cool alternate win con. All right, the next one is Underworld Breach. For one and a red, we have an enchantment. Each non-land card in your graveyard has escaped. The escape cost is equal to its card's mana cost, plus exile three other cards from your graveyard. The beginning of each or beginning of the end step, sacrifice underworld breach. Yogmoth say what? This like a, is red Yogmoth, essentially, yeah. I want to say budget Yogmoth's will, but who knows how expensive this card's going to be. This is yeah. true. I mean, in a red deck, that's that's really, really good. I mean, there's a lot of um spell slinger decks or or mono red decks or yeah. uh most decks like are going to want this in there. Flames? Like, a lot of spells in their decks play past in flames, but this I is, just want to play yeah, this. Yeah, this is just better. Well, like, it depends. It depends on if you value, like, a couple of cards versus all the cards in your graveyard, because yeah. you do have to exit all the cards in your graveyard, but, mm -hmm. like, if there are only a couple that you really want to cast anyways, that's not that bad of a downside. I mean, so. just a uh, blue-red deck, say that you cast Expropriate, and on your next turn, you cast Underworld Breach and cast Expropriate again. Mm. And you can that just well, I mean, or you double tutor, right? Like, double tutor, yeah. 
it turns all of your tutors into double. Um, it's I very mean, similar to Kess, Kess's ability, like letting yeah, you cast yeah. uh, an instant or sorcery from your graveyard. So, yeah, this feels most like a red Yawgoth, uh, Yawgmoth's will. Obviously, it's not as it's good. Black. It is, uh, Yawgmoth's will is three, right? Two and a black. Two and a black. So this and is then, one red. Yeah, but Yawgmoth's will also makes all cards that would go into your graveyard this turn exile instead. Uh, this, you can still cast spells and they'll go into your graveyard. Like, if you're trying to combo off on your turn, um, Underworld Breach allows you to, like, use your counter spells twice in the turn to defend mm -hmm. your combo, which is pretty cool. Um, wow. But, yeah. Cool card. Yeah, Very and cool. there's also a fact that Yagos will, as well as exiling cards from your graveyard when you use them, also exiles itself. Underworld Breach does not, which means there is potential for recursion, which that just makes it just fun. a little bit much Very better. Very fun. Way cool. Wave Break Hippocamp, two and a blue, enchantment creature, horsefish. <laughs> Doesn't that exist? <laughs> seahorse. Why did they call it a seahorse? <laughs> That's why it sounded weird when I said it. It's because it exists. I'm just going to call seahorse it's a horsefish. A sea horse. Hey, son, look at that <laughs> horsefish. Horse <laughs> We're keeping this. What horse. a horsefish. <laughs> <laughs> what a nice horsefish. Uh, I was like... Oh, on the man. tip of my brain, like, wait, that exists. What's it called? What does it do? <laughs> Whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, you get to draw a card. I don't see how that relates to a horsefish. Uh, yeah, so this would be... I mean, this is really cool in Rashmi. Um, I mean, yeah. Trendy's Crafter. It's cool in any control deck. It basically, like, replaces the counter spell in your hand that you're waiting to save on your opponent's turns, which would be... Awesome news to them, let me tell you. <laughs> any Esper <laughs> control, any um They'll be Azorius, thrilled. They'll be so happy. Blue decks, like casting spells on other people's turn is something that I know Len and I love to do. Caleb also loves Hates to do to it. Hates to see it. Hate Hates it. to see it, loves to play it. Yeah. <laughs> um then drawing cards to refill your spells is awesome. And this mm -hmm. thing, the thing I like about this uh horsefish is <laughs> it doesn't it's not a removal pinpoint, but this card could single-handedly propel you into a winning state throughout the game. It's a helicopter. Um, so if you do see this card, this is kind of dangerous. Because sure somebody can have this, they're going to abuse it. All right. Next one is Woe Strider. Two and a black for a 3-2. When Woe Strider enters the battlefield, create a 0-1 white goat creature token. Then you can sacrifice another creature to scry one. Ooh. And then it also escapes for three and two black and you exile four other cards from your graveyard to escape it. But we're not done. When it escapes, you escape it with two plus one plus one counters on it. So, we, yeah, it's pretty cool. We've got a sack outlet that can also be recurred, which is really cool to see. I really like seeing this that. This is an absolute outlet. goat of sure. sack outlets. Uh, the fact that, yeah, it's repeatable, that um, you can always trust that it's going to be there unless somebody exiles it, because in an Aristocrats deck or in a Sacrifice exactly deck, what you want. yeah, you're going to have so many cards in your graveyard that you're not even worried about exiling yeah. four other cards. It's, it's so you can keep it into your graveyard until you're ready to set up and then just bring it back when you're ready. I think this is an amazing card. It's going to go great with all the other uh, Sacrifice outlets and um, really help those decks out. It's not as good as Yehenny, who's also three. Uh, I think yeah. it is. I uh, think it well, is. it's different than Yehenny. It's different. I mean, it gives you a token true. that you can sacrifice. I think the that's, recursion that is, is the thing. Is that no matter how many times it dies... Unless but it Yehenny up, doesn't die. That's the thing. That's it you don't have to recur Yehenny because it doesn't die. It, it has indestructible. Die, but right. I don't know. Well, no, it only has indestructible. It's hard to kill. You, yeah, when it, you sacrifice a creature. It, it, it is hard to kill. Um, They're two different cards. They are two but, different cards. I, I think I'd prefer War Strider over Yehenny. In a board Anything? wipe... You sacrifice your entire board, Yehenny gets swole, everybody else's creatures have been wiped, and then you just kill everybody with Yehenny. That's true. You can't do that with Will Strider. Yeah. That, that's all of it for the rest, so we have just a little bit more, guys. We're yeah, just, gonna just do a the couple uncommons. I think there's only like three uncommons that are worth mentioning. Congrats for sticking with us all yeah, the way this that was far. You guys my are condolences the true to goats. Um, all right, let's talk about the first one. I think the first one is going to be uh, Cling to Dust. Uh, it's a uh, one black for an instant exile target card from a graveyard. If it was a creature card, you gain three life. Otherwise, you draw a card. Escape for three and a black. Exile five other cards from your graveyard. To repeat this again. So this is this this is really good, especially in CDH decks where you want to be able to remove the 
uh, combos in graveyards, such as Protean Hulk, uh, Micaeus, Walking Ballista, things that are in graveyards. Um, mm -hmm. Anything else that goes to the graveyard that you need to remove, if somebody's playing a Marin, you can just get rid of those cards that they're bringing back. And so it's you, kind of meta specific. Yeah, and yeah. It, you can exile non-creature cards to just draw a card if you wanted to. That's that's not terrible. I like that it card. Replaces itself. Cool. So we've got Flicker of Fate. It's another good instant for any um, white Flicker decks, Azorius Flicker decks. Uh, it does go infinite or, or blink. Sorry, that's a blink. No. Sorry. Blink. It says yeah, flicker, same. but it's a blink effect. Yeah, because flicker usually brings it back at the end of the turn. Right. Or does this bring it back immediately? Mm -hmm. it back yeah, immediately. that's funny. Okay, so yeah, it's a, it's a blink. So flicker of fate will, with two other cards, let you take infinite turns. The first card that you have to have is the Mirari Conjecture. It is a saga from Dominaria. And it's kind of a tricky one, but on the very first part of the saga, it says return target instant card from your graveyard to your hand. So you're going to be targeting Flicker of Fate with that if it is in the graveyard. And then the next turn, you get to return a sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. So you'll play something like Time Warp that uh, is a sorcery that lets you take another turn. And so then you'll... So you play Time Warp first, and then you play Flicker of Fate on the Mirari Conjecture, Mirari conjecture which will let you get the Flicker of Fate back. You take your extra turn, and it goes to phase two of the saga, where you get your time warp back, and then you play time warp, and just keep playing it over and over again. You have to have seven mana for it to go off, but since you're taking infinite turns, you're going to be building up your land base anyway, and you're going to win. So we thought we'd bring that up just because Landon likes combos, and that's kind of Landon-ish. Landon-ish, I love it. Yeah, it's Barely. I'm probably not going to play it in any deck, but there you go. I yeah. probably won't play it either. But. Yeah. He likes more mean combos that don't take seven mana to win. <laughs> more he wants to win on turn one. More efficient combos. Yeah. That's what I'll say. Yeah, it's definitely not the most efficient combo. But it's but cool. It is cool. It's worth mentioning. If you ever, if you ever want to do that, you can do that with Flicker of Fate. So the last card that we're going to be talking about is just Whirlwind Denial. It's an uh, instant that costs two and a blue. And it says, for each spell and ability your opponent's control, counter it unless its controller pays four. Whoa. Uh, that's a huge, huge ceiling. Like, you can counter so many things. You can counter loyalty abilities. You can counter enter the battlefield abilities. You can counter a huge stack of spells. It's like kind of like a Flusterstorm. Um, but Flusterstorm only hits instants and sorceries. This can hit a lot more things than Flusterstorm can. Very cool. And the flavor text says no, no, and no. <laughs> so if it targets more than three things, um, it's not flavorful. Yeah. This this is, <laughs> and it has to target at least three things. At least three things as well, because Extremely no, blue no, card. and no, no, right? Yeah. So no, and it costs three mana. Holy Ooh. crap! Oh my gosh! Well, okay, jeez. <laughs> All right, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think that's about it. That's all the cards that we wanted to talk about. Again, please include in the comments below if there's any cards that we missed, uh, interactions that we missed, or things that you guys would like us to We probably to know. missed a lot. So we did. Like I mean, to... <laughs> again, this is our first set review that we're doing on, uh, on a camera, know. so there's probably lots of things we forgot. We're still new, so thanks for bearing with us, guys. We really appreciate it. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment everything that you think about this set. What things you're excited for? Legendary creatures you Legendary want us to creatures build. Legendary creatures you want us to want us to build. Please stay tuned for all the deck techs that are coming out every Monday. Our podcasts, gameplays, and new content that's coming out soon. Yeah, make sure you hit that bell so that you can be notified anytime that one of our new videos comes. Which out. will be every Monday. Which is every Monday. Every Monday for our deck techs. For our deck techs. All right, guys. Thanks so much for joining in. We really appreciate it. See you next and with time. that, we'll see you next time. Later. Thanks, guys, girls, and goats. is good and you liked my deck tech uh it was a great landon <clears throat> it's gonna please, take a while for you to hear that please. it's gonna take time man <laughs> it's just i need some it's not you it's it's caleb what <laughs> <That is nothing. laughs>